All right, folks, hope you're doing well today. Phil Duke Jr. here. I want to talk about how um, to get your agents into production quickly and and how to actually hold them accountable. Um, the last um, four years, uh, I've been running a real estate brokerage and we have uh, pretty much grown this thing um, mainly from going out and hiring brand new people who are brand new into the business and turning them into producers. So, um, you know, we were um, kind of the new guys in town, uh, you know, particularly when we swapped over and became a first class franchise. You know, our business model was kind of unproven at that time. And, um, you know, either the model made sense for top producers and for team leaders and and even for people running offices. Um, we just found the people who saw the most value um, and the easiest ones to get signed up to join our company were the, uh, the, the brand new people. So I'm speaking from, from that, um, point of view today. If you're a, a team leader, a broker owner that doesn't go after, uh, brand new licensees, you know, maybe this isn't the video for you, but I would also ask you to consider if your goal is to be profitable and you're basically saying you're not going to work with one particular type of agent in the market, you're throwing away a lot of profit. So new agents to me are, uh, I, I like them. Uh, we are still heavily involved, you know, normally two or three a month. Uh, we get brand new licensees and, and we're getting better and better at how to recruit them. But, but today I just want to talk about how, how to get them into production quickly. So, um, so some of you out there, you probably have um, disc assessments. Maybe you're doing Enneagrams. Maybe you're doing personality tests. Um, I have not found, and I don't think anybody has, has found the secret sauce of what it takes to determine whether or not somebody is going to be successful or not. Um, so most of us that have been doing this for any length of time have given up on trying to do that. So I would say step number one is you've got to create a system that allows them to get into production quickly. And here's what I mean. When I was first getting started as a broker, I just uh, I had several years of transactions, you know, several hundred closings, um, you know, just lessons learned along the way have been in multiple coaching programs. And I really just thought, hey, I'm going to take all this knowledge and experience that I've gained from being out here in production. And I'm just going to put a course together. I'm going to put some classes together and I'm just going to teach agents everything that I know. Right. Well, the problem is, number one, that was very, very overwhelming. And uh, but but in reality, we did that. We tried we tried to do that at least. And we tried to come up with um, simulations for every scenario. We tried to come up with uh, a very elaborate training program. It took agents generally about 30 days to complete it. And so, you know, you imagine a new person, you know, passing their test, getting their license and waiting 30 days before they really started contacting buyers and sellers. All right. Imagine having a listing. Imagine having a seller who wanted you to list their house and you tell them, well, I got to do this, 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 and this, and it's going to be about 30 days before I can even get your listing on the market. It wouldn't be a good business plan, would it? So I share that story to tell you, you need to figure out how to break it down and make it super simple. Because when you throw too much at real estate agents, they tend to shut down. All right. If you're watching this video, you are probably have been a successful agent yourself. Maybe you're a team leader, a broker owner, or you're thinking about doing that, you've probably had some level of real estate success uh, and you've got a lot of knowledge. However, if you throw too much at your agents, you're going to overwhelm them. You're going to paralyze them. And, uh, you know, so so the goal should be to get them into production quickly. So we went from having a 30 day training period to a 14 day training period to a 10 day period to a seven day period. And really broke it down to just a couple areas that we focus on now. And we just give them the basics of what it takes to get started. All right. Because that's the goal. Let's just give you the amount of training that you need just to get started. OK, so what do agents need to get started? Well, you know, there are some brokers and some team leaders are real heavy on script training and sales training. Um, we do a little bit of that, but that's not the cornerstone of what ours is. Um, cause see what I also found too, is if they're really, really good at scripts and if they can remember objection handlers 
and they know what to say on the phone, but they don't truly believe that they can help a buyer or help a seller. They struggle with getting on the phone because they feel like, hey, I'm just another salesperson who's trying to sell something, but I really can't help these people. Okay, so I, what, what our training program looks like is we go over um, basically a mock transaction um, and really heavy on the buyer side uh, of what would happen if a buyer hired you to be the agent. What would have to happen? So in our area, there is some, some you know, a buyer agency agreement. There's a real estate brokerage services disclosure that says how we're going to be working with this person. Um, then we have a contract. OK, so we've got to get those those agency documents signed. We've got to teach them how to write a contract and just just the basics. And and, you know, all they're really doing, at least in our area, they're just filling in the blanks. They just got to know what the blanks say. They got to know what those paragraphs say, what they mean, and how to explain it to somebody when they're actually sitting in front of them. Right. Um, so they need to know how to do that. So they need to know how to how to write an offer. They need to know what to say and to do to set appointments. All right. Hopefully you'll agree with me. If an agent is great at the contract, but they don't know how to set appointments, who cares? They'll be the best agent that knows how to write a contract who has no transactions, no closings. So they've got to know how to write a contract, though, and they've got to know how to do the documents associate, associated with that. They've got to know what to say and what to do to set appointments. They've got to know what to say and do when they go on those appointments. And then from the time they get a client who goes under contract, they need to have a basic idea of what it looks like from contract to closing day. So the inspections, what order do they get the inspections? When do they get waivers? When do they present a net sheet? When do we get a FHA, a mandatory clause, a lead-based paid addendum? Those are things, those are really the four pillars, the four basics of what we go over with agents. So, so we've got that program. That's kind of step number one. You need to have an onboarding program. All right, if you just think you can hire them and they just come to your, your weekly meeting and they're going to be successful, um, you know, good, good luck with that plan. You got to have an onboarding program. That's number one. Number two, you got to get them out there quickly. All right. I already kind of mentioned that the faster you get them out there, the faster they're going to get to the closing table. What we found is if agents don't get to the closing table within 60 to 90 days of them getting in the business, they almost never get to the closing table. All right. Several years of data would prove this. And it's not just my company. It's other broker owners I talk to. It's it's, it's seminars I go to. Um, if you can't get them to the closing table quickly, they're going to start questioning. Number one, is your company, is your team the right fit? And then number two, was real estate really the, the right fit for them? Did they really make the right decision by jumping into real estate? So they lose confidence, right? So a couple of ways that you could you could really kind of, uh, you know, get the odds in their favor to get them to a closing quickly, which is going to get them to a closing faster. Work in their sphere of influence or talking to online leads who are strangers. All right. Uh, both work. Right. But you have a much higher conversion rate, like 10 to 15 percent conversion rate on a sphere of influence lead versus one to three percent on an online lead. Right. So let's make sure, I mean, every agent I have who's successful here, uh, we have 57 agents um, here at this office uh, as of today. Every one of them who is a success works their sphere of influence. And it's the reason they started off strong and it's the reason they're still going strong today. So why don't we get them doing that right away? That's one way to do it. And then if you have a lead source that you can pair them up with, um, you know, paid leads that you're paying for um, or, you know, like we're a fan of revenue first lead sources. That's all we use. We don't we don't pay monthly for leads. We only pay for lead sources where we only have to pay that lead source when and if we have a closing. So we pay a referral fee. So Op City, um, Homelight, Quicken Loans, Veterans United. There's a bunch of them out there. Ojo. Those are the kind of lead sources we want to pair them up with. But I want to tell you, be careful. Be careful with those lead sources, particularly 
you know, Op City, Zillow, Flex, where they are live connecting them with a live buyer who's ready to go look at a house. If you start them off on that really, really, really early and, you know, number one, I think it's great. It's great that they're getting to talk to somebody on the phone. It's great that they're getting to go out and work that lockbox. It's great that they're getting to use the MLS. Those are all things that you can build upon. But if all they're doing is working those lead sources, they're not going to make very much money. And they're going to have to work way harder to actually get to the closing table because most of those lead sources take two, three, four, six plus months, you know, before you get a closing versus somebody in your sphere of influence wants to buy a house or their brother or their sister or their coworker, you can get to the, the closing table a whole lot quicker. But agents also, the ones who are afraid of getting out there and talking, they can get used to having those live connects and that becomes the only lead generation they do. They just sit at home and they wait for those leads to come in through those, those referral sources. So just, be careful with that. So you need to have uh, some type of a good lead source. So we talked about uh, you need to have a good onboarding system. Okay, you got to have some training. You got to have at least some basics. I would make it quick, get them through it quickly. You need to have them out there through it quickly. We kind of mentioned that too. Um, and then you need to have a lead source that you have proven over time can get them to the closing table quickly for us. It's their sphere of influence. We're really good at teaching agents how to work their sphere. And if they do it correctly in their first 30 days, they're going to get a buyer or a seller or both out of working their sphere. Um, And then the last thing, probably the most important thing of all, those other things are great. Almost every team, almost every brokerage has those things. But where you can really make a big difference is in the accountability that you're providing to the agents. So do those agents know what they should be doing day in and day out? Or are they having to come to you for it? All right. We provide ours with a 30 day action plan and it lists out for them every day for 30 days, what they need to do. So when we hire them, okay, and this is where accountability starts. It starts in the hiring process. I've got some, some notes popped up here on my screen. You know, some of the questions that we ask them, or something like this, how many hours per day are you willing to commit to growing your real estate business? Are you committing, uh, are you willing to commit to attending our Monday morning mastermind in person or at least watching the recording every single week? Okay. Uh, Are you willing to follow a business plan that we both create for you? How many people are you committed to talking to every day about real estate? All right, so you see how that conversation is a whole lot different than if you join here, we'll give you this and we'll give you this website and this CRM and this contract management system and here's our training calendar and and here's all we're going to do for you. We're going to make you successful. All right, it's a whole lot different conversation when you start talking to them like business partners instead of clients. All right, when you go into a listing presentation, it's I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. You're not really asking them to do a whole lot, right? but in a business partnership. And that's what these agents have got to be for you. They've got to become business partners. The conversation is different. So you get them to give their answers. All right, write these questions out. Think of some good interview questions as you're going through these. Um, you know, a couple other questions I've got on here. What kind of schedule are you going to keep? When will we see you in the office? Are you committed to learning and practicing the various forms and documents you'll be using every day in the real estate business? Okay. Those are the kind of questions we ask on an interview and we write down the answers. And we also tell them at the 30 day point, we're going to do a check-in. And at the 60 day point, we're going to do a check-in. And at the 90 day mark, we're going to do another check-in. We're going to see whether or not this is working. All right. So my job is to give you the roadmap. My job is to make sure that You have all the tools, all the strategies, all the trackers, all the admin support that you need to be successful. Your job is to go take action. So at 30 days, for example, uh, here's something I wrote down on on one I did the other day. We agreed at 30 days that they would have at least 100 leads inside their CRM, that they will have gone on at least four preview showings. And what I mean by that is, You know, an agent who just gets their license, who just starts with you today or this week, they might not have a bunch of appointments set up ready to go, right? 
but they can go look at vacant houses. They can get practice using the MLS. They can get used to seeing what's on the market and how it compares to other properties, right? So, so we set 100 leads inside their CRM, four preview showings in their first 30 days, at least three buyer or seller appointments, real buyers or real sellers, at least three of those appointments. Because if they have at least three of those appointments, they should get at least one buyer or seller agency agreement signed. We also put on here that their Facebook business page would be set up, that their Zillow and Realtor profile would be built, that they would start working on their post license course, and that they would do we would do a mock document review. So we have a stack of documents in our area, probably you know, no more than 30 pages long of every document that they're going to use day in and day out. And at the 30 day mark, we're going to randomly pull one of those out. And we're going to ask them to explain it to us and walk them through it. Uh, walk us through it like we're their client. OK, so do you see how that kind of accountability actually creates a sense of urgency? Like, oh, crap, like this is about to be for real. Versus, hey, we're glad you're here. We're going to post about it on Facebook. Come to our weekly meetings and call us when you need us. That's how most people do, right? That's how most team leaders, that's how most brokerages run. Uh, this is very intentional. 30, 60, 90 days, okay? At the 60-day mark, we put in here, we want to see improvements. So if they did three buyer-seller appointments in their first 30 days, they ought to be able to get to four or five or six uh, by then. They ought to have two or three clients by the end of 60 days. And again, another mock document review. And then at the 90-day mark, we should see their numbers start to improve. And again, I just have generic improvement on there. You got to you know, define what improvement is. Is it going on more appointments or is it closing more of the appointments they're going on, right? If they go on three appointments and month one, they only close one out of three. They only got one out of three to hire them as the agent. But what if month two and month three, what if they, what if they got two out of three to sign on with them? That's, that's improvement to me. And then by the 90 day mark, they should have one closing or they should at least be pending, scheduled to have a closing. So again, this starts in the beginning. This starts in the interview process. This starts with how you bring them on. It starts with how fast you get them into action, okay? If you want them to get into action quickly, you've got to make it quick for them to go through your onboarding process. If you don't have an onboarding process, you've got to create one. If you don't have a lead source set up ready for them to go, you need to go out and explore that. You need to get that ready to go. You need to have something ready to go so that if they joined you, they're not waiting on you to, uh, to, uh, to to show them how to do it. You want to provide them a, uh, an onboarding packet, a PDF file, a, a video file that's going to show them everything they have to do, and you're going to hold them accountable by having those, those meetings. Ours are 30, 60, 90 days. You might do every week. You might do every two weeks. The more agents you have, the more scalable you're going to have to be with this. Okay, We're typically bringing on three to five agents per month. Um, so a 30 day check in is very manageable for us. And it's a very realistic goal uh, for them to hit those numbers within 30, 60, 90 days. So that is how we get new hires into production quickly and how we hold them accountable. I uh, hope, hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out and I look forward to talking to you soon.